Hello, pre-calculus students. We have a question here for continuing on our discussion of the law of sines. Given that A is 36 degrees, B is 7, what are the possible values for little a? And how many triangles can be formed? And so we're given very little information here, just an angle and a side. And we're asked to see what are the restrictions on the other parts of this triangle. And so before we get into answering the question, it's best just to do a little bit of an um, exploration here. So let me bring up GeoGebra. And I've, you can ignore the stuff here on the left side. I've constructed uh, what we're given. Uh, I've made an angle here that's 36 degrees. Made a side here that's 7. And this here, I made it 5 just for the heck of it, just to pick 5. But it could be anything. And our question is, how small can this number be in order for us to have a triangle. So let's just test it out with five. So if I can bend this down here and you can see with a equal, little a equals to five, I can actually make a triangle. Um, how small can I possibly make it? So let's try maybe uh, four. Can I make it with four? Uh, it gets pretty close. Maybe it touches, maybe it doesn't. So let's try again. Let's look at some extremes. And it's helpful sometimes just to look at the extremes so that we can see uh, maybe a general idea of where we're headed. So at two, clearly you can't make a triangle. Okay. So it's somewhere between maybe four or five that, um, that we can make a triangle. So four gets pretty close. Uh, five, a length of five here definitely gets us that I can definitely make a triangle. So what is the smallest that this length can be, in or this red line right here can be, in order to reach the other side and form a triangle? Well, if you go back to geometry, the shortest distance between a point and a line, or a line segment, is the distance that forms a 90 degrees, a 90 degree angle with that line. So in other words, this red line is at its absolute minimum when angle B is at 90 degrees. Okay? So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to hide some of this. And I'm going to bring up some other parts of this that, that I've created already. Let me bring up that side and that and this angle. Oops. You see this green line right here represents the shortest possible distance uh, between C and this long uh, line right here. So this is the shortest side. The shortest that it can possibly be is the one that forms 90 degrees with the side. And it, another word for this is the height of the triangle. Okay? So we can figure this out now uh, using a little bit of uh, trigonometry. So we can do, in this case we can say that the sine of 36 degrees okay, is equal to, now let's call this side H. So H is the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay, which in this case is 7. So therefore, 7 times the sine of 36 degrees is equal to h. And I'll, you can type this into a calculator, but this comes out to approximately uh, 4.11. So it's approximately equal to h. Okay? And that is the minimum value for the third side of this triangle. It's got to be at least this long, because if it's shorter than this green line right here, it's never going to reach the other side, and you're not going to be able to form a triangle. So uh, if you got some paper in front of you, write this number down. We're going to go back to this in, in just a minute. Okay. So what we can say here is that the other side here, the side opposite of angle A, so A has to be uh, at least H. If A is less than H, so if A is less than H, and I'll write it right here, then zero triangles are possible. Okay. 
So that's the first thing that we can uh, conclude here, that if A is less than H, then no triangles are possible. So let me take a picture of that, and, and we will proceed on to uh, the next parts of this. So maybe we can make one triangle, maybe we can make two triangles, um, and we'll figure that out uh, in our next example. Or, sorry, not in the next example, as we continue on with this. So, let's move on now. And let me, just, let me just illustrate this point here. Let me bring, move all this stuff away. Whoops, I want that. Let me move all this stuff away. Let me bring A back. So if A is 5, we can make a triangle. If A is about 4.11, then it turns out that it can it will line up exactly with this uh, with this opposite side and it will form exactly one triangle okay. um, and if it's any shorter than that no triangles are possible so let's think about the scenario when only one triangle is possible so let's say if I make a really really big so what is the maximum value of it? let's say if I made this like 10 could I still make a triangle? Pause and think about it before I answer it. And now let's try. You see, I can make um, one triangle right here, but could I make two? Could I maybe move this in a little bit and make two? And you can see here that it's not possible without changing the 36 degree angle. So if A is 10, I can, I can make a triangle, but I can only make one. Let's try some other things. Let's try something between uh, 4 and 10. So let's go back to our example of 5. And you can see here I can make one triangle. Okay, that's one possibility. And I can also swing this line back in and make two triangles, in the, as in, in the ambiguous case. So two triangles are possible when it's 5. What about if it's 6? Could I make... Uh, a triangle that has a side of six. And how many triangles could I make? Well, let's see. Well, let's just keep trying what we've been doing. That's one. That's two. Uh, what about eight? That's one. And when I try to swing this back in, it doesn't quite work. So it's between six and seven. So maybe we'll try seven. And it turns out at 7, when A is equal to B, you end up with an isosceles triangle. And when we swing this in, it can't make a triangle because in order for it to make one, it's got to stop before it hits angle A. See, at this point, angle A and angle B are the same, are in the same spot, so you can only make one triangle. So from this, what we can conclude is that if A is greater than or equal to B, then one triangle is possible. And if you think about the other case, when we, when we compared it with H, there's only one possibility left, and that's if A is between H and B. And only in this case can we make two triangles. And I apologize for my handwriting. I'm still getting used to this. So if A is between is greater than or equal to B, then we can only make one triangle. If A is between um, A and B, then we can H and B, I should say. Then we can make two triangles. And one more scenario is that if A is equal to H. So what if? Let me save this before I close it out. What if A 
is equal to h. So what if it was 4.11? Well, in this case, I can make a triangle. And in fact, I can only make one triangle. So if a is equal to h, I got to make one triangle, and it's going to be a right triangle. And so let's go back to um, our notes here so we can sort of put all of this together. So you see in here, in the first scenario, if, let me go back here. If A is less than H, then there is zero triangles. But not only that, if, A is equal to H, then we have a right triangle. Then one triangle is possible. If A is greater than or equal to B, then one triangle. And if A is between A and B and H, then there are two triangles. So that was, a, that was a lot of stuff that I just threw at you with inequalities. But try to draw the triangle, uh, go through the process, think to yourself, and really reason with yourself. Uh, when is it that you can make two triangles? When is it you can make one triangle? And when is it that none are possible? So to recap, if A is smaller than H, and in other case, if, it's, if it can't even reach this other side, then you're not going to have any triangles. If it reaches that side exactly, then you're going to have one triangle. If it's bigger than the other side, or B, then you're going to have one triangle. Or if it's equal to B, you're going to have one isosceles triangle. And finally, if it's in between H, which is the minimum value, and B, which is the other side that we're given, then you're going to have two triangles.